Good morning, it's breakfast time again, and then we're going to go and see a museum. Yep. So I hope you'll stay around. Look at that. A waffle in the shape of Texas. We're just waiting for a taxi, we're going to a museum. I'll get out the brochure. Um, let's see. Uh, museum at the Gulf Coast? Yep, that's the one. And we get to see Janice Joplin's car or something. He wants me to take a picture with it. Yeah. So that's going to be some fun. So this is the industrial part of Texas. Yeah, that's the refineries. Yeah. That's all they got. That's all they have here, refineries. This supposed to be the biggest refineries they have here in Port Arthur. Well, you from they got refineries too, huh? Uh, yeah. So yeah, we got do, here. yeah. Y'all got there too, right? Uh, I know a couple down, I know a couple near where I live, but it's not, yeah. not like this. So, we're inside the museum, Michael's next to a crocodile. We yeah. were actually going to, oh, alligator. We were actually going to see some real alligators, and Michael was going to go swimming with them. But the place only opens on weekends, and I'm heading back, um, to Houston in a couple of days, so we won't be able to see Michael swimming with alligators. I know you're so disappointed. I know Michael's disappointed. <laughs> no comment. Here. This is a rat skin, and it's really smooth, actually. That's a big rat. Yes, I feel bad for it. It's a huge rat. Lunch. I think they're hungry for an elephant. Hmm. <laughs> It took that many spears to take out one elephant back in those days. Probably did. Now we've got things like MP5s and... <laughs> this fish is called a hog choker. And that is what it looks like. If you wanted lunch, I think you found it. <laughs> this is called the barn owl. It's a very common owl. They like to, as the name implies, hide in barns. Where it's like comfortable for them. Then he has some vultures. This is actually a hawk right here, by the way. Okay, and this is a um American keystraw. And what fish is that? This is the Texas state record of the biggest flatfish flounder they have ever seen. Flounder are actually pretty good common food, believe it or not. Oh. People like to buy it sometimes, like fresh river water. Noted here. Fresh, less dense river water. They're freshwater fish, basically. Okay. This difference between that and the salt water. Hmm. Freshwater fish cannot live in salinic water, believe it or not. Just like saltwater fish can't live in freshwater, because they die. There's only some Michael threatening me with this cannon. <laughs> I'd fire it if that wall wasn't in the way. Maybe we should put Lizzie there. He can take my photograph of this thing over here. That's one of the oil uh, derricks. I think, I think I'll stick with my handy can that Michael's holding at. To be quite honest, you don't ever see these anymore, but this is an oil derrick they used to draw oil that put Texas on the map in the States. Even though it was independent in one time or another. What are you talking about the camera, actually? Oh, that thing. That's one of the oldest living cameras known. Or one of the old models. I'm not well, sure what that is. Set that up. It's crazy. Uh, it was pretty complicated back in the day. Yes, yeah, now I just have my camera on and press the record button. Man, it works fine. Yep. There. <laughs> Bring my mobile. I don't think. It How works. do you dial? How do you know a phone number to dial? That. Uh, let's see. I think this is one of the first telephones here. Yes, but how do you actually, like, know who you're ringing, or... There's no way to actually dial a number, is there? It was an old, old one. Um, yeah. Well, hardly anybody else had them, so he didn't really need other people's numbers, did he? We're looking at Port Arthur history as a... Uh, very old photo. Look at this. This is uh, the Kimberlin Telephone Company exchange in 1940. 
14. This is what the, this, for those who don't know. Look at the bicycle. It, yeah. it doesn't look, um, that's a reasonably modern design. Like, you normally have the penny farthing with a great big wheel and one little wheel. Let's show everyone telephone history. For those who don't know, that's what they did back in telephone old days. Yeah. It was much more complicated, much slower, so uh, be thankful for what you have today. Yeah. It's in 1914. Wow. That was almost 100 years ago. And this is 1905? Back when they had the first sundry, I'm sure. Look yeah. over here. And look at those cars would be worth a fortune if you had one today. Here's some young Take a look at what we found here. Hey George, how'd you like to own one of these? Or one of those. Or one of these. Show them the suit. They're good. Wanna go for a taxi ride? <laughs> this is one of the old, old, old styles. Get in closer to This is uh, a Ford model A Fanta touring car, which would be a like a taxi, basically. Like a sun, sun hey, look at this, this is. One of the oldest cars hmm. um, that you'll ever see. Here's the engine over here. How'd you like to have this, George? Is George mechanically inclined? We'll have to ask him later. Look behind you, though. At this old thing. Wow. The home laundry delivery. Light space back here. Yep. And we look inside where they would have stepped on and rode. How'd you like to okay. drive one of these? <laughs> and it's been the kept engine. in very good condition. And this would be about the time when Texas became a state. Okay, guys, what we're looking at is back in the old western days when Texas was considered the West. The day when, you know, all the cowboys, gunners, and whatnot lived, back in the 1800s. This is all what they had to live to in their own household. Or an example of. That's how they made butter. <laughs> I presume this is a big anchor, and that would be yep. this chain right here. I had to pick that up. Um, this must have been back in the days of the old ships, um, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. The founding of Port, Port Arthur. Arthur. In, nine, in, oops, sorry. in 1895, Arthur Stillwell purchased 53 acres of land that included the old site of Aurora and set aside 40, sorry, 4,000 acres for a town. The city of Port Arthur was laid out to serve as a terminus for the Kansas City Southern Railroad, which he was promoting. The railroad was completed in 19, sorry, 1897 and a channel 12 feet deep was dredged through shallow Sabine Lake to connect the town, whatever, site with the Gulf by 1899. And here's an article from... 19... 1897. You're doing it as well now, you're saying that getting the 19 and... Uh, wow. That was at the turn of the century when, uh... Just, uh, yeah. Railroads were the thing. Wow. <laughs> this is some of the things they used back in the day to do surgery with. Tonsil snares. <laughs> oh man, if you hated going to the dentist before. Huh? Mm. You should have been living years ago. Yeah. <laughs> if you actually look on top of the $20 note, it says national currency. And if you have a look at what it says today, Federal Reserve note, which is very interesting if you do a bit of study um, and you'll see that it was Woodrow Wilson who signed off on the Federal Reserve Act. Michael is about to press a button. Usually oh. in the museum they have hands off everywhere, but this one says right. you can actually press, press it. it. Let's see what happens. And what you see is an oil rig. Hmm. Whew. 
That was a short little thing. Wow, it's the most was... amazing thing I've ever seen, Michael. <laughs> this was um, back at the start of the uh, petrochemical industry when they were exporting yeah. oil from Port Arthur, which is how they put it on the map. Okay. This would be one of the oil derricks. That's how they got the oil. Ah. These are some everyday petrochemical products, you see. Made out of, made from crude oil and petrochemicals. Provided a broad spectrum that uses effect, uses that are affecting our everyday lives. Apparently. Now you're looking at an American flag and it's a little bit out of date. Judging by the number of stars. This one had 44 stars. It was the official flag of the United States from 1891. When Wyoming was admitted as a state. Until yep. 1896. When Utah was admitted as a state. That was still made 46. Oh wow, look at all the stars are actually sewing on. Yes, they made this by hand before they used white dye. Very classical. This water fountain that Michael was just drinking from is from 1934. And it still works. For example. Drink. Yeah. And this guy, Mr. Strother, is still alive. Political strategist and author, 1940. Uh, and this guy, Congressman Jack Brooks. I have never heard of him. This is a bit of Texas history that everyone's looking at. Yep. Most of these um, notable people have passed away. Here's another one who's still, who's still with us. Hmm. Over here is a genie lamp. And what? Let me read this. It was Elvin Key's last wish that upon her death that her ashes Evelyn. would be placed. Evelyn. Her ashes would be placed in a lamp similar to the one that emerged when she played a genie in the 1945 film A Thousand and One Nights. And here's her coat, apparently. And that's what she wore. Huh? Apparently, you ladies who love that stuff. Well, again, Moore was a producer, and here's. One that I think a lot of people would know, Back to the Future, part two, with Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd. I have to say it. Great Scott. Here you have some of the weapons of the Civil War back in the 1960s. What cannons typically used. <laughs> yep. Right here, um, apparently, if you notice, Jefferson County was part of the Civil War. Hmm. Versus where we're at. And right here, I did not know that, well, it's ever wondered that they say it was a southern state, but they never said why until I found that. Which one? Texas. Okay, Te yeah. Texas, Texans have apparently seceded from the Union and became a southern state because of the slavery okay. deal. Wow. Back way when in the day. Sad though. So Texas secession is part of its history. Hmm. Just to clarify to those who are for or against secession. Interesting. Thought I'd like to clarify the couple of things. This is from an old, old white lighthouse, believe it or not, back in the old days. Some of the sea life. These are very pretty. Look at that purple one. And you have red ones. These are all like scallops, basically. Wow. Like living, inanimate creatures, sort of. Which one? Oh, a spiky one. Yes. They have all kinds of sea life here. Including this one. If it were similar to the other, it probably would have had a crab. These are the ones. Some of those shells will have hermit crabs in hand in them. Depending. Some sea life for everyone. Well, that's a big one. Okay, these ones are really big. <laughs> big wow. crabs would live in them, eh? This is why they didn't have red lobster back then. <laughs> just stand next to that man. I just want to, like, and that's a. Imagine trying to man this wheel. It's huge. 
back in the day, this is what they used to steer those kind of ships. Those were live ships back in the day. Mm. When they were to sell to and fro. That's a great model. Titanic, anyone? <laughs> nah. Becky Barksdale. I have no idea who that is. Oh, I know who that is. You got a guitar. She wasn't even a musical choice. Benny Barnes. Never heard of him. And this is a jukebox right over here. George Jones? This is a jukebox. <laughs> With compact discs, yeah. That's somewhat anachronistic, isn't it? Considering the age of some of these musicians. Tex Ritter. I don't even know who these people are. Mark Chestnut. You got Tracy Bird. I've heard of a band called The Birds. I haven't heard of Tracy Bird. Mm. All right, I've heard of the Big Bopper. He's the guy who died in a plane crash, I think, with Richie Valens and um, Buddy Holly, wasn't it? There was a fourth one who was going to be on the plane with him, but didn't I? Can't remember who that is. Oh wow. Handwritten sheet music. Barbara Lynn, I don't know. I wonder if she's a jazz singer. And have a look at this. Nah. <laughs> wow. It's a 1956 Porsche 356. Uh, How do you pronounce that word? I don't know. Oh, it's a replica. Yeah, a reconstruction of the exact car. Oh, it's, it's not the actual one. I thought it was. Can we just take a picture of it? Oh, okay. I guess. And she died in 1970. That was years before I was born. She didn't live too long. Or not, she lived in... Okay. She lived right in this city. She was born in it, believe it or not. She came from here, basically. Wow. True story. Okay. I've actually never seen a car like this, especially this painted. <laughs> it's kind of cool, doesn't it? I'm what? standing in front of a replica of Janice Joplin's um, psychedelic uh, car. Yes, back in those yes. days in the 70s, they were called hippies. Hippies. How they did the paint job, I have no clue. Alright, we're gonna keep looking. And you're looking at a tenor saxophone. I used to play the saxophone when I was 15. I bet you didn't know that, Michael. No, I did not. Well, you know now. And this is what I would like to play. Not bass, though. Uh, they're not basses, Michael. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> sure. He was born six. He was died six years after I was born. Wow. If you look at the dates. Okay, you're looking at an alto saxophone. Um, it's actually an E flat instrument. The tenor is a B flat. Um, if you understand instrument tunings, piano is actually C and guitars are actually C. I think violin is C, but it uses an alto clef. Somebody might be able to clarify that for me. Do you have any idea what I'm talking about, Michael? Sort of, but I'm not, I've not actually ever played an instrument yet. We're in a part of the museum where there's a lot of different art. Well, it's one's a photo. Oh, he's, he is one of the artists. Uh, Robert Raskenberg. Yeah, and this is his art. You see, really weird. It's what you call abstract, Roger. Yes, abstract. abstract. Art has no flow, no rhyme or Like that, like that crazy guy who cut off his ear. It's just basically go at it, have fun. That's a good example. Of 
It has an idea, but it's not like it doesn't have to make sense. Exactly. You just make what you see. This is like a montage of all different kinds of things. For the most part, the individual pictures themselves aren't too crazy, but they're all put together in sort of a mishmash. This is the sports part of the museum. Now, most of these names will probably mean absolutely nothing to me. And I could do the same thing. I could say, like, Gary Ablett's the greatest footballer the world has ever seen, and you'd have no idea who he is. Maybe if you had like Tiger Woods or some name I might recognise, or Andre Agassi. These are some of the old names back in the day that were famous for what they do. Since we're not much of sport fans, we don't really know the names. Maybe some of y'all might. Well, if it were baseball, I know a certain Californian lawyer who might know. <laughs> Just in case you're listening. <laughs> what? Oh. Watch. This one's got a history too, look at this. Oh, this one's from 1949. And it also works. I had to watch my Why would anyone deck their room out in pink? I detest pink for everyone. Pink I curtains, pink floor, pink walls or the ceilings. Wow. Except for the chandelier, that's beautiful. Yes, it is, it is. This it, is you got pink in everything, look at that. Pink. Even they've even got pink in the artwork and wow. See more pink? Somebody likes pink. Well, we just got done with the museum. It was a, a refreshing reminder of middle school. I believe or elementary when I actually came here. I've long since forgotten about it. History happens to be one of my favorite subjects and Roger now knows why Texas and USA history alone are very rich. It's over a hundred years or more of things that have gone on. Of course, we got to see Janice Joplin's car. This is downtown Port Arthur, isn't it? Yeah, um, this is originally where Port Arthur actually started. You can see all the old buildings or whatever. They haven't really remodeled it after it's been... What's the polite word? Depreciated over years? Mm -hmm. It used to be the biggest booming part of Port Arthur where this originally was Port Arthur. Now it's spread out to way over there and it's just like... Port Arthur's not been the same since. Like a ghost town. Yeah, in the street, yeah. That. We're gonna go get Michael a haircut. So this is what he looks like before. And we'll have a look what he looks like after. Well, here's a new and improved Michael. <laughs> this is how I normally like my hair is. For the exception of the sides being spiked up, that's normally how I like it. Short and spiky. Alright, now we gotta find some lunch, don't we? I hope you're hungry. <laughs> uh, we haven't had anything to eat since Brecky. Nope. So, here's where we are. Yes, this is where we are. What we were originally going to eat Saturday. But we went to Luby's, didn't we? Yes, because this place was closed. Now what did you order for your entree? My appetizer is going to be egg rolls. A very good yep. classic. Appetizer. And I order the noodle soup. It's got chicken, beef, cabbage, carrots and lots of other little goodies in it. And for the mains, we're going to share a lemon chicken with steamed rice. That one's sweet and sour, right? Yeah. I don't know what the other two are. That must be some type of mustard of some yep, sort. Yep, and that's 
You don't know, do you? I forgot which one this was. I've been to a lot of Chinese restaurants when I was younger, actually. I was just discussing with Roger about how they used to always have fried bananas. I've gone to Bonkers because they have this on the menu. Not sure if Mr. over there wants me to have dessert. This is a noodle soup, you can see I've got mine. Michael's got the shrimp, I don't really like shrimp, and he's got his egg rolls, and he's almost demolished. And this is a lemon chicken we are about to eat with, with rice. some rice. Take a look over there. That's going to be the new McDonald's in Port Arthur. And I don't know how many days, but it looks like to me they boarded it up quite a bit. <laughs> What's down here? I'm about to do some washing. I've got something called Tide. And I'm gonna put it in. And it's on. That'll be done in about half an hour, I guess. You look very different now, man. For all those who are weirding out right now, this is how I prefer my hair. Short, spiky, no sideburns. Which I'm pretty sure you're happy about. You hey. look like you just got out of the military. Are you a happy donut too? No. Well, since we had such a big lunch, we're just going to do something easy. We're going to Burger King, Roger's favorite place in the world. Well, here we are at Burger King. And you've got the, um, the um, I don't even know what it was you It ordered. was a double Whopper. It's a number two. Okay. You got a double Whopper? It's interesting, they're only half wrapper. That's interesting. It's got bacon, by the way. Yep. And I don't like bacon. You ordered it. Yep, and I'll eat it. Now we've got chips, I've got a double stacker. I got and fries. And I've got a vanilla flavored Sprite, which should be very intriguing. And what's your drink? Water with grape in it. Water with grapes in it, okay. 